What's up? This is Steven from Digital Media Pocket Knife giving you the tools you need to get the job done. And in today's video, we're going to focus on how to create spreadsheets using Google Sheets. In this video, I'm going to dive into how to find the most commonly used features, how to create sheets, and all that fun stuff. So let's dive right in. The first thing you want to do if you want to create a new sheet is to get to your Google Drive home page. If you're not familiar with Google Drive, I'll put a link in the description below, but if you're in your Gmail, then you click on this application grid in the upper right corner and click on Drive. Once you're in your Drive, you want to click on the button up here that says New and then scroll down to where it says Google Sheets. And Sheets is, again, it's a web-based application that allows you to create spreadsheets, very similar to Microsoft's Excel. First thing that we can do when we open our sheet is to name our sheet. So up here in the upper left corner, we see untitled spreadsheet. We'll name this test sheet one. Perfect. And we see that Google automatically is going to save our documents. It's a very cool feature with Google Drive is that it automatically saves our documents. We never have to go to file save. In fact, that button doesn't even exist. Google automatically saves it. It's saving it to your free cloud storage. So once we've uh, created a name for our document, I want to put in some test data here. this column we'll do one so this is just some test data I made real quick I'm actually gonna create one more row here and I'm gonna do this will be our category and this will be our quantity if I can spell there we go perfect okay now, if you saw the video tutorial on Google Docs, I want to first go over some formatting options within Google Sheets that are very similar to how Google Docs operates. Up top here, we'll see some very familiar formatting. We can choose the font of our text on the screen, the size as well, and then we can also bold, italicize, change the color, etc. I'm going to actually bold this first row here so that it differentiates between the header and the rest of the data in this document. And we'll get into some of the other functions a little bit later in this video. The first thing I want to show you is underneath the edit menu. Now in the edit menu, the functions that we're going to see here that you're common to use most often, you know, we see cut, copy, and paste, uh, paste special. That's a feature a little bit more advanced and we can get to that in another video. But some of the other common functions that we're going to see here are delete values and delete rows. Now let's say that I have my cursor here in the, let's say we're going to get rid of uh, this row here. If I highlight a cell in this row, so row six will differentiate between columns. Columns are the ups and downs. The, the A, B, C, D, E, those are columns, and these are known as rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, blah, blah, blah. So if I select the value, any value in row 6, I'm going to go to this edit menu, and we'll see delete row 6. Now if I click this delete, we're going to see the values disappear. They no longer exist in this document. Now I'm going to Command Z that, or Control C if you're using a Windows computer, to put that back. Another way to delete a row is I can actually right-click the row and then click delete row. And it'll do the exact same thing as if I were to go to edit, delete row. I'm going to put that back. Now, let's say I actually want to freeze this top row here. If I scroll down, you'll notice that all of the values in this, in both of these columns, uh, scroll with the page. And I want to actually freeze, let's say I have a long list of data here, and I want to continue to see row one as I scroll. If I highlight a cell in row one, and then I click view, freeze, I can choose between one row, two rows, or up to a certain number of rows. If I was further down on the list, let's say row seven, it would allow me to freeze up to the current row. If I was selected, it would say seven here. So I'm going to actually just click row one, and you'll see now that as we scroll, the first row stays put, it's frozen, and the rest of the values will let me scroll. So again, this is good if you have a, a large list of data in a single spreadsheet. Now that's about it in the view menu. You can choose to turn off the grid lines, that's if you want this bare looking spreadsheet or to turn those back on and you can play around with uh, a few more of those features here I mean the other big one here is I'm gonna say the formula bar is probably the most important if you write a lot of Excel formulas in there um, then you'll want to keep that bar visible so that it's easy to find now under the format menu we're gonna see a lot of the same functions that we see here on the format bar we can choose to bold italicize underline strike through etc we can also do some conditional forming, which is a little bit of a more advanced feature, but basically it says if a cell value matches this criteria, then we can format the cell to look a certain way. And I'll get to that in another video. One thing I do want to show you in the format menu is the format we can choose for the values in our spreadsheet. So if I go to format number, I can actually choose how this number behaves 
So if I wanted to display a number as a percent, then I would go to format number and then click on the percent and the values here would then display as percents. You can go in and customize the settings a little bit so it only displays 100 with no decimal places and then the percentage sign. Really, you can customize it to however you want. And this really comes in handy if you're doing calculations or complex formulas within sheets. Certain numbers behave different ways and that again is a little bit more of an advanced topic and we'll get to that in another video. Let's control Z that. Now you can play with some of the other functions within the format menu, but as far as basics go, those are some of the most common features within Sheets that are available in other comparable programs. I actually wanna jump back here to the insert menu. And this is where you can actually insert columns and rows. So if I did, let's say I wanted to insert a row below row one. If I clicked insert row below, then underneath row one, we're gonna get a blank row two. All the values are gonna shift down. So we get a blank row. Let's say we wanted to add a record into this spreadsheet. We can easily do that by adding a row that way. We can also, let's say we want to add a row a different way, we can right click on row two or row one, make sure you get the row and not the divider in between, and you can do insert one row above or one row below. And let's do one row above, and we can see that we added a row in a similar way. We can also do the same things with columns. If I right clicked the column A and I wanted to insert a column to the right, I'm going to click insert one right, bam, we get another additional column to the right. Back again in the insert menu, let's say I wanted to create another sheet. Now down here we see that I've got sheet one here and I wanted to create a second sheet. Maybe I just wanted to store additional data or maybe store a chart on the other sheet. I can actually create another sheet by clicking one of two things, insert new sheet and we see that a second sheet was created or I can click this plus button in the bottom left corner and that'll create another sheet as well. Control Z those two things. Another cool thing about these sheets down here is you can double click and you can custom name these and the name of your sheet then will be customized so you can find things a little bit easier. I believe you can also color code these sheets. There we go. I can actually change the sh color of the, uh, the tab and it's again a little bit just for visual separation from other sheets. Um, I can customize this one as well and it makes differentiating the sheets a little better. Maybe you can categories if you wanted a blue here and another blue somewhere further down. Uh, very cool for organizing, customization, etc. Another cool thing about the insert menu is we can see down here under function, we have the opportunity to select any of the various functions that are built into sheets. And these are similar to the functions that we're gonna find in uh, programs like Excel. I'm actually gonna put this into a different uh, cell here. I'm gonna go back, insert function and let's do a sum. Now, if I click on any of these cells within this document, it's actually gonna add that to the formula, and I don't wanna do that quite yet. I wanna add my own customized uh, function here. So if I'm in sum and I see that cursor blinking where it needs to be, then I can actually begin to write my formula. So let's say I want this sum to be uh, one plus uh, one plus one, and then it's two. So if you're familiar with functions in Excel, functions in Sheets work very similar to how they function in Excel, it's very cool. Also similar to Excel, under insert, you can add charts, you can add images, you can add links to websites or documents. Um, you can also add forms and drawings. Now with the charts feature, I actually want to uh, highlight that. So let's say I highlight all of my data in this sheet and I go to insert chart. Sheets is gonna automatically build me a chart based on the data. So see here, it recommended a, uh, a nice bar chart and it gave me the names of my columns and it built out uh, the values for categories and quantities. If I was happy with how this sheet looked um, and I didn't wanna do any customization that we could do over here on this tab, then I would simply select insert and Sheets would automatically insert that chart into the document. If you wanted to get back into the chart, there's this quick edit icon that lets you click on some of the data points and some of the columns and headers and, and the title in here. If I wanted to get back to the more advanced customization menu, I would simply click this button in the upper right corner of the chart and click Advanced Edit, and I would be back to this customization chart editor here. We're gonna click Cancel. I'm actually gonna remove this chart for now, or you know what, we can just drag this over here. There we go. The last thing I wanna show you within Sheets is underneath the data menu. Over here is where I can actually choose to sort and filter the data within my spreadsheet. There's also something I wanna show you with data validation. We'll get to that in a second, but. Let's say I wanted to sort the column that I've selected, so column A, which is category, and I wanna do it in descending order, reverse order, reverse alphabetical order. I would click this sort sheet from column A, uh, Z to A, and it would reverse the order of this sheet. Now we can see that it also affected the chart, how the chart is displayed, 
that displays then in reverse order as well. So basically how it looks here in the sheet is how it's going to look within our graph. I can also choose to throw a filter on my document. So I actually want to filter the quantity column here. So I'm going to click on quantity. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to go to filter. What that's going to do is it's going to throw a filtering option onto that column. And it actually threw it on both, which is very cool. So if under quantity, let's say I only wanted to see certain values. So I'm going to click where it says filter by values. I'm going to do clear. I only want to see records where the value is two. So I select two and I click OK. Now only those two records are returned. And as we can see again, it affects the chart here. We're only going to see the values in the chart that we're filtering by in the sheet. Cool stuff if you're a nerd. And that's it. That's really the basics of how sheets work. Now, back here under the file menu, let's say that we wanted to share our document. Uh, under file, we can click share. And similar to how Docs works, and really all the applications within Google's Drive web application suite, uh, we can enter in an email address here. And once we're done, we click enter. And if it recognizes who you have in your address book, then it's going to place that picture here and show you that you've got the right contact selected. You can click send, and what that will do is it'll fire off an email to that contact saying, hey, this person wants to share a document with you, and they can accept or decline the invitation. You also have the option of sharing documents rather quickly. You don't have to send them customized email. Let's say you wanted to send a shareable link through a text message or Facebook Messenger. You can also click this Get Shareable Link button, and that's going to display a link that you can then copy and paste within your text app or your messaging app. Now, don't forget to select over here. Um, these are the permissions that you're giving the person you're sharing these documents with. Um, so let at this point, the person that you're sharing this document with can only view the document. If you wanted to let them edit the document, edit the values that we see in the table and the chart, you can click on this drop down arrow and you can say, this person can edit. Now that updates this link here. So if you highlight this and then copy link, then you have the link that you can share with people who will be able to then customize that document. And you can do that rather quickly. So we're going to click cancel here. Let's say you wanted to download the document so that you have it on your computer for personal use. If you go to file and then you go to download as, you have options to download this as a Microsoft Excel sheet. You can also download it as a PDF or some other options here. Um, PDF, I love that you can do this right from Google. Very handy feature to have. You can also see the revision history of a document, which I, I love this feature as well. It allows you to see how the document has changed from when it first opened to its most current state. And on the right-hand side, we do see the history of this document. The one on the bottom, the very bottom here, is how this document existed when it was first created. So when we first created this document, there was nothing to it. It was a brand new blank document. And then we made all of our changes, and that's what this record is here. So if we click that, we're going to see the document as it currently exists. Now, if this document has gone through a ton of changes, you're going to see a ton of clickable options on the right hand side here. And you can restore the document to any version in the version history that you'd like to restore it to. For example, if I were to click on the beginning of this document and I clicked restore this version, it would restore a blank version of this document or how it existed when we first created it. So we're going to actually keep it on our most recent uh, version here. And I'm going to go back to the document. And let's see, under the file menu, if we were done with this document, we didn't want to see it anymore, it, it just needed to go into the trash, I can actually move this document to the trash. And once I click that, Google automatically places it in our Google Drive trash bin. Now, at this point, you can confirm whether or not you actually want to throw this document out. Um, if you click Go to Sheets home screen, then the document stays in the trash bin. You can still recover it. I believe Google will hold on to it for... Uh, an indefinite amount of time. I'm not sure that they actually delete your trash without your permission. So you can also opt to take this out of the trash if you click that button by mistake. So we're done within this sheet. So I actually want to see all the sheets that I've created within Google Sheets, and maybe you want to do the same. I'm going to click this button up here in the upper left corner. It's the Sheets Home button. And this brings us to the Google Sheets homepage. What we see here in this list is a list of all the different spreadsheets that we've made. Uh, currently, we only have one here. So that's the only one we're seeing. Sheets also offers us templates that we can use if we want to create a document based on that template. We don't want to do it from scratch. Let's say we want to create a to-do list or a budget or a calendar even. We can click any of these options and Google Sheets will open up a template that we can use to then create that type of document and it will save it automatically to our Google Drive. So this is Sheets and it's again, it's a great tool. It's a great 
alternative tool if you don't want to pay a monthly subscription for software that you can use for free. And again, Sheets is a very robust uh, option. Not Maybe not as feature rich as uh, Microsoft Excel, but it's going to help you get the job done and get it done for free. So if you have any questions on how Google Sheets works, or maybe you want some advanced training in maybe some formulas for Google Sheets or any of the other functions, maybe conditional formatting, leave me a comment below and uh, I'll see if I can make a video based on what's most requested. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Keep the creative juices flowing by subscribing to this channel. I try to post at least one video a week to help keep your skills sharp. Remember, if you have any questions on Google Sheets, leave me a comment below and I'll try to help you out or, or create a, maybe another video on some of the more advanced features. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to focus, take this information and go do something productive. So now that you know how to use this application, check out below for any of the other two applications as we dive deeper and you can find the most common features, how to create good looking documents and all that fun stuff. I'll wait. You're there. Waiting for you to click. Toodles. <laughs>